When we think of a high-performance Subaru, the first thing that comes to mind is the SDI. And why not? Because, well, it already proved itself in the rally stages and it's an icon in its own right. But the thing is, the SDI is a little bit too hardcore for some people. So what if you're looking for a high-performance Subaru that's still well, somewhat daily friendly? Well, ladies and gentlemen, I introduce you to this, the Subaru WRX. Now the WRX isn't exactly a new vehicle, but you know, through the years, it still looks pretty good. And I have to say, it's still a pretty nice looking piece of design. Now, of course, their pitch here is a rally car for the road. Not as mean looking as the STI, but you know, they still wanna bring in those elements in. So you have the blistered fender flares at the front and the chunky quarter panel over at the back. And of course, it wouldn't be a Subaru WRX if it didn't have the hood scoop. Now, of course, there are several differences between this and the SDI. Now, this, of course, doesn't have the SDI badge on the grill. That's a given. But curiously, this has fog lights and the SDI doesn't. So if you see one of these and it has a fog light, then you know, yeah, you're looking at a WRX. Now, from the side, it almost looks the same as the SDI until you look at the wheels because these are slightly smaller. They're smaller by one inch. And behind those wheels, they're not Brembo brakes. They're standard Subaru units. Although they are bigger, just to be able to reel in the power of this WRX. And over at the back, unfortunately, you don't get the iconic rear wing. But that brings me on to a different point. Now, the WRX isn't exactly what we'd call, well, subtle. But at the same time, it's not too in your face. And that's a good thing because, well, not everyone wants to shout about having a high-performance vehicle. And having two extra doors definitely helps in keeping that low-key image. You step inside the WRX and it looks a lot like the standard Impreza. And I'm not talking about the all new model, I'm talking about the previous generation that came out almost seven years ago. But that said, you do get you know, a good amount of soft touch materials. You have soft touch materials here on the door and at the top of the dashboard. And just to add a little bit more sporting flair in here, you do get some red highlights spattered all over the interior and as well as faux carbon fiber panels. Now for the thing you're gonna hold all the time and that's the steering wheel. And the rim is pretty thick, which is what you'd expect from a performance vehicle. And it even has a flat bottom. Of course, it has the red stitching to emphasize its sportiness and all that. Well, I have to say that the steering wheel has a lot of buttons, but that also means that there are a lot of features in this car. So you have your audio controls here, you have your um, your toggles for the multi-information display and cruise control. And while we're at it, if you're wondering why there are a lot of buttons here, it's because this is equipped with Subaru's EyeSight Safety Suite. But we'll get more on that later. Now to the instrument cluster and well, you could tell that the car isn't exactly entirely new because of the analog dials. It's actually mostly analog from your thermostat, your rev meter and your speedometer. Even the fuel meter gauge is still analog. That said, you do have a colored multi-information display. The display is on the small side, but I really wouldn't complain too much about it. This car does have performance in mind and having those clear dials and gauges definitely helps. But like most Subarus, the WRX comes with a two screen layout and the screen on top is sort of an extension of a multi-information display. So you have your boost gauge, you have your clock, you have your fuel economy meter, you even have your inclinometer and stuff like that and more auxiliary displays. Now moving down is your touchscreen audio system. And well, I have to say it looks 
well, it's not exactly the most up-to-date looking system, but well, at least it does come with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto to bring it right to this decade. Other features here, well, you have two USB ports and an auxiliary port, and you also have a 12 volt socket. So you have a lot of charging options here in the front. You also have a pair of cup holders right near the driver's side and a shallow storage pocket. Now the armrest, well, I kind of like it because it slides forward and back. So you could either pull it back so you have more space or you put it forward if you're kind of stuck in traffic and you want to chill that little bit more. Now you may have noticed that it is not a manual transmission. What we have here is the WRX with the CVT. And I can already see the comments section seething with hate. But here's the thing, don't judge a car by its transmission. If you're trying to convince people that the WRX is a practical proposition, well, the back seats present a good case for that. As you can see, the legroom is surprisingly good and I can even stretch out a little bit. Even the headroom, well, that's not so bad either. For more practicality, you could even fold down these seats as a sort of extension for the cargo area. And yes, it also comes with Isofix mounts. But if there's one thing I do want to add in the WRX, it's rear air conditioning vents because, well, some cars have them, especially in this sort of size segment. But then again, the WRX isn't your typical C-segment car. But if you still need to convince more people that the WRX is a practical vehicle, all you have to do is show them the trunk. Because underneath there is 460 liters worth of cargo space. And as I mentioned earlier, you can fold the seat backs down to extend the cargo area. So that pretty much covers the WRX, at least when it's standing still. Now, right now, you're probably curious what it's like to drive, especially with that CVT. Chances are, if you get a Subaru WRX, it will be your regular driver. Not necessarily a daily driver, but something you'll use more often during the weekday. So how is it like? Well, let's start with the ride. And I could best describe it as tolerable. Now, right now we're on an asphalt surface and, you know, from what you're seeing right now, it looks pretty smooth. However, when you drive along roads like EDSA, stuff like that, or when the roads get a little bit more pockmarked, well, that's where the firm suspension really, really makes its presence felt. And you are going to feel every bump, every rock, every pebble, and every road surface change through the suspension, and you're gonna feel it through your backside. So for some people, that's okay, but if you regularly ferry passengers, I don't think they're gonna find it a comfortable experience. That's why I call the ride tolerable. But the firm ride aside, you'll be surprised that the WRX is very easy to drive because the steering is a bit on the light side. Now that's not to say it's totally devoid of feel or any of that, it's, it's just light. And that makes it easy to maneuver and easy to drive, easy to park and all that. And speaking of easy to park, it has a camera at the front and at the rear to make those tricky maneuvers a lot easier. Fuel economy isn't exactly the priority of a vehicle like this. I mean, just look at it. But I have to say that it returns pretty decent figures. Now in, well, somewhat heavy traffic, you're looking at about six to seven kilometers per liter. And that's not bad for something that's packing over 260 horsepower. And when the road gets a lot lighter, well, I reached a high of, wait for it, 11 kilometers per liter. That's actually pretty good. Now for the elephant in the room, the continuously variable transmission. What is it like? Does it drone on and on like your typical CVT? Well, in the case of the Subaru WRX, it doesn't. In some ways, it even acts like a dual clutch transmission. Sense the jerkiness. 
and you know, I have to say that Subaru is one of the best out there when it comes to building CVTs. What amazes me is that it can handle that much power considering it's, well, it doesn't have gears, it has, well, a chain. And uh, you have to give props to Subaru for that. It's even coupled with Subaru's EyeSight system. So when it gets really congested, it's actually a godsend because all you have to do is set it and follow the car in front, tap the accelerator from time to time, and it stops by itself. So, well, it just makes being stuck in traffic a lot, well, more tolerable. So yeah, the Subaru WRX does, well, the boring stuff, well, pretty well. Well, sans the stiff ride, but at least it's not like somebody put cement in the tires. So yeah, the WRX can you know, bring it to work and you know do the errands, stuff like that. But you know, this is a WRX we're talking about, and the best way and the best road to experience it is if we head up the mountains. Now we're in the WRX's natural element, winding roads. And uh, after all, WRX does mean World Rally Experimental. Now, of course, we're on public roads, so we advise you not to break the speed limits and generally not be a jerk behind the wheel when you're on roads like these. But anyway, how does it feel like? Well, it's exactly as you expect it to be, a high-performance vehicle. There's bags of grip thanks to symmetrical all-wheel drive and the firm suspension, while a little too hard for some people, well, it pays off in handling situations like these. So coupled with the all-wheel drive and the suspension settings, you have this feeling that you know, the car's just not gonna fling off the road when you know, have a little bit, more, a bit of fun behind the wheel. And of course, when things get a little bit hairy, this car does come with stability control and traction control. And we just like to remind everyone that the best place to turn those things off is at a racetrack and not on public roads. So how does the CVT feel like and spirited driving? Well, you'll be surprised because it doesn't drone on and on as what, what you typically expect from a CVT. Instead, well, I'm rather surprised to say this, that, you know, when I'm playing around with the paddle shifters and all that, it acts like a dual clutch transmission. And the good thing is, it doesn't jerk around like a dry dual clutch. It, it feels, well, pretty natural. Do I miss having a manual transmission in this car? Well, on a road like this, perhaps. But the CVT is pretty surprising. It is responsive, especially when you put it in sport sharp mode, the most aggressive setting. And, well, for those who are looking for a car that they can both daily and enjoy on a weekend, the CVT is totally fine. And I think you'll even enjoy it more and appreciate its flexibility. WRX may not be a totally new vehicle, but it still has a lot to offer, especially in the thrills department. And at 2,158,000 pesos, it's an absolute performance bargain because no other car offers this much power, handling, and practicality for the same price point in the new car market these days. And when you think about it, well, it's about the same price of a mid-size SUV. And yes, it's a bit of an apples to oranges comparison, but that gives you an idea of just how good the value proposition is of the WRX. Sure, it's not perfect because of that stiff ride, but it has a lot more to offer than that. Now, this has been Anton Andres from AutoIndustria.com. If you enjoyed this review, do subscribe to our YouTube channel. And while you're at it, you could like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram and Twitter as well. Thanks for watching.